Have you ever found yourself looking at a blank screen, unable to find the right words, or even any words, or a blank canvas but no image is coming? Or maybe you've been noodling around on the guitar for hours or days on end, but you can't seem to get past those same three chords? As creatives, we've all experienced those dreaded two words. Two words that strike fear into the hearts of creatives everywhere. On today's video, I'm going to give you strategies to battle writer's block that apply to all kinds of creative endeavors and problem solving. Hey, I'm Jeff Katerba, and on this channel, I talk about the creative process and overcoming obstacles so that you can follow your dreams. If this video is helpful, give it a like. And to get more content like this, be sure to subscribe. The terrible two, those two words that strike fear in creatives, writer's block. Writer's block, or what is more broadly called creative block, is that feeling that you're stuck. Either you can't come up with any ideas or you can't move beyond the ideas you already have. Or maybe you're just having trouble focusing and not sure where you want your project to go. In short, it's the inability to access your deeper creative self. But not to worry, if you've experienced writer's block, you're not alone and I have solutions for you. Hey, have I experienced writer's block? Yeah, more times than I can count. As a newspaper cartoonist, it's happened all the time and often with only hours to spare before deadline. It happened while writing my memoir and it even happens when doing something as simple as writing an email. In other words, it can happen to any of us at any time. Writer's block has been with us since the beginning of time. And while I have no scientific proof that prehistoric cave dwellers suffered from writer's block, it might explain why some cave walls are blank. I mean, maybe. In all seriousness, countless creatives throughout history have experienced writer's block. Great minds from Da Vinci to Beethoven to Maya Angelou. Blank pages have been found in Da Vinci's sketchbooks, and Beethoven himself once wrote, 20 drops of sweat, every note costs me, and sometimes I am inspired with the thoughts of a donkey. Many of us creatives have complained from time to time about monkey mind, but I kind of like the idea of donkey mind. And while creative block has been with us forever, the actual term writer's block wasn't coined until 1947 by Austrian psychiatrist Edmund Bergler. The good news is that it's not a medical condition and more than likely it's temporary. And often it'll clear up on its own after a short while. And sometimes you just need to get back to creating. So what can you do to battle the terrible two and start creating again? Just start. Sounds simple, right? It really is. Author and poet Maya Angelou didn't care for the term writer's block. She felt that the term gave away too much of her power, and I tend to agree with that. But whatever you call it, she did sometimes have trouble with blank pages. So she would just start writing anything, even if it was complete nonsense. The cat sat on the mat. That is that, not a rat. You literally sit down at your laptop or with your notebook and move around. Get your fingers going. Scribble, write total garbage, sketch nonsense. Pick up the guitar again, and if it means playing those same three chords for two weeks straight, just do that because it's important to keep going. Even if what you're drawing or writing or playing is awful and boring. Maya Angelou might write, the cat sat on the mat, that is that, <laughs> not a rat, for two weeks straight. But she once said, even if it's boring and awful, showing up and doing the work will let your muse know that you are serious. When you show up, so does your muse. Just keep going. You will make it through. And then there's the Dunning-Kruger effect, which I sometimes accidentally call the Dunder Mifflin effect. Dunning-Kruger is based on a study published in 1999 by psychology researchers David Dunning and Justin Kruger. To oversimplify the basic premise is that we don't know what we don't know. When I was starting my swing band, I had only written rock and folk songs, but swing music involves more jazz-like chord structures and phrasing, which I'd never played before. I didn't fully know what I didn't know. Yes, I could imagine what the songs could be. I could feel them in my bones. And I could imagine my band performing on stage. And I might've started with a clever lyric or a catchy melody, but then I would try to actually write the song and realize that it was more complicated than I first realized. I'd get frustrated and put my guitar back in the case. Maybe writer's block means you need to shift gears. You may have a great start to your screenplay, but then when you hit the second act, you realize that you don't have as much information on your characters as you thought. Or maybe it means you just need to learn more about what truly matters to you, what's important to you, your why, your reason for doing your creative project, about your craft, or even about your characters. But because my why was so strong, I really wanted to start this band. I took the guitar back out and bought some how to play jazz guitar books with actual jazz chords 
in theory, and began studying other jazz guitarists. It was 24-7 jazz for me. When I went back to finish those songs, I now had actual information that could help me. Harnessing the power of parameters. Limit yourself. We're creatives. Yes, dream as big as you can, but set reasonable goals. This will help you from becoming overwhelmed. In her beautiful book, Bird by Bird, Anne Lamott writes about her one-inch picture frame. She keeps it at her writing desk as a reminder that all she has to do is to write down what she sees in that tiny little frame. It's vital to set goals and deadlines. When I started as a newspaper cartoonist, the deadlines automatically came along with the territory. The deadlines forced me to come up with ideas every day. So I would scribble on blank sheets of paper, even if it was just gibberish, anything to get the juices flowing. But when I started that swing band I mentioned, there was no deadline. I made one up. I boxed myself into a deadline. I'd heard about this new club that had opened in Omaha that was looking for swing bands to perform. So I went there and spoke with the person booking the shows and told this person that, well, I had a swing band that played all original music, even though it only had one song and was still auditioning musicians. That was in July and the first show was booked for October. I know. It was nuts. After my initial thrill of booking a gig, I quickly reminded myself it was now time to put in the work to get better, to learn more, to write all those songs that the band would eventually play. Embrace your crappy first drafts. Heck, embrace your crappy fifth or seventh draft. I have some works with 12 or more crappy drafts. The creative process can often be a messy and downright ugly process. When writing an early draft, creating something new, be gentle with yourself. Remember that it takes courage to create and it's an act of vulnerability, but it's also really beautiful, even when it's just scribbling. But even if your first draft is crappy, that's where the editing process comes in. Just get as much down on paper or on the screen as you can and then go back later to revise. It's in this revision process you can look at your own work with a sense of distance. It's like sifting for gold in all the muck. You never know what little treasures you might find. Just don't judge yourself along the way. Judging yourself will only stop you in your tracks. Keep going and then go back later to evaluate and edit. Get out of your own head. If, after trying all of these things, you still find yourself stuck, reach out to some other creatives. They might have some great suggestions for you and they can encourage you. Often I find just being around other creatives creatives can offer inspiration. As long as hanging out with other creatives isn't actually a distraction from doing the actual work. By the way, my swing band and that show I booked, even when I had hardly any music or musicians, I did finally write songs and I did find other wonderful musicians. Musicians who challenged me and taught me and it was in collaborating with them and practicing often that the music really came to life and took shape. If you're struggling with the terrible two writer's block, remember that all creatives have dealt with it and that you can, you will get through it. You will finish that book, you will finish that song or that painting and many more will come. And then you can share your experiences and advice with others on how to battle creative block. Just start, even if it's total garbage and then keep going, even if it's total garbage. When you hit an obstacle, it might mean you just need to keep going, but you might also need to deepen your knowledge of a particular subject. Give yourself some parameters, but also set deadlines. Even if the deadline are totally made up. And finally, be gentle with yourself. Never be self-judgmental. Just trust that eventually other less boring words will appear. Follow these steps and soon you'll be overcoming those terrible two words we creatives all dread. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments and for you to share your experiences when dealing with writer's block. If this video has been helpful, be sure to give it a like. And remember, if you want more content on overcoming obstacles so you can deepen your creativity, be sure to subscribe. See you soon and keep on creating. Mm -hmm.